The Black Knight. Not so very long ago, a good king ruled over the land of Ruritania. His name was Basil. He was much loved by his people. He treated them fairly and made sure that every family was well looked after. They had food and clothes in abundance, and every Sunday was a day for celebration. They would dance and sing until sunset, and everybody was happy. The day came, however, when King Basil died. There was much chaos and concern throughout the land, for he had died without having any children. There was no one to take over as king. The Prime Minister and all his advisors could not come up with a solution. As regrettable as it was, they had no choice but to place an advertisement in the Royal Tanya Herald. Wanted. Person of sound mind and pleasant disposition to fill the vacancy for king or queen of Ruitania. No time wasters, please. Many people applied for the job. Farmers from the east, businessmen from the west, a school teacher from the small town of Brosk, and a business paper owner who lived in the clouds on the top of a high mountain. But none were successful. They were all eminent people in their own fields, but to be a king or queen... You have to be an intimate person in everybody else's field as well. So it was that one year after King Basil's death, his successor had still not been appointed. The search continued deeper and deeper into the countryside for a suitable candidate, until the Prime Minister was sure that every single person in Ruritania had been given the chance to come forward. Yet he had found no one who could match up to the late good King Basil. It was about this time that the news of King Basil's death reached the neighbouring country of Draconia, where Prince Igor, known as the Black Knight for his dreadful deeds on the battlefield, heard it with delight. Ruitania has no leader, he said to his generals. Tomorrow we shall gather up our armies, march across the border and seize their crown. If they cannot make up their minds, then I shall make it up for them. I shall be King of Ruritania. You'll be the most powerful man in the world, said his chief of staff. Don't think I hadn't thought of that, said the Black Knight. I shall also be the wealthiest man in the world once I have stripped Ruritania of all its possessions. He laughed out loud, and his generals laughed with him. The following day, the Black Army swept into Ruritania. It moved forward like a mighty column of ants, devouring everything in its path and leaving a trail of destruction behind it. The people of Ruatania were not prepared for such an onslaught, and they put up little resistance. It was not long before the Black Knight and his generals had reached the great wall that surrounded King Basil's castle. We'll camp here tonight, shouted the Black Knight to his troops. Rest now, for at dawn we'll storm the castle! The Black Knight left his generals and went in search of a quiet retreat where he might construct a foolproof plan to capture King Basil's castle. He had not walked very far when he chanced upon the River Altar. He had heard about this river. Its sparkling blue waters were renowned for their magic powers. The Black Knight kneeled down on the grassy bank and was splashing his face with cool water when he noticed another face looking up at him from the riverbed. What a handsome fellow, he thought. Then he realized that it was his own reflection. Suddenly, the face in the water came to life and spoke to him. Tomorrow morning may be too late, Black Knight. You have the most powerful army in the world. You are the most cunning general. You will smash Ruletania. You will seize the throne. And you will be master of all its people. But only if you crush their armies tonight. Move on the cover of darkness. Kill them all while they sleep in their beds. A baby pike was swimming underneath the Black Knight's reflection as it spoke, and thinking the reflection was a tasty meal, it came to the surface to nibble an ear. The clear water was dispersed into a thousand ripples, and before the pike could take a second bite, the Black Knight's reflection disappeared. The Black Knight was furious. That stupid pike had not been so nosy, he might have learned a lot more from his reflection. Nonetheless, what little advice he had been given made good strategic sense. 
He would attack King Basil's castle that very night. It was a bloody battle. Many of King Basil's loyal followers lost their lives in defense of the castle, but the might of the Black Army proved too strong. By morning, the Black Knight had declared himself the new king of Ruritania. His reign of tyranny had begun, just as his reflection had predicted. It was as if a dark cloud had settled over the country. People wept as their houses and possessions were taken away from them. Children were snatched from their mothers and put to work in the service of their new king. The prime minister and all his advisers were taken from their beds and hurled into the dungeons underneath the castle. Throw away the keys, ordered the black knight. Let them rot down there for the rest of their short lives. Singing and dancing were banned. Ruritania died. The Black Knight enjoyed his newfound wealth and power. He could tell everyone what to do, and no one dared to answer back. After a while, however, he grew weary of bullying people. Weeping peasants no longer interest him. He found the whole process of ruining a country rather boring. He needed some excitement. He decided to return to the magic waters of the River Altar. He would ask his reflection for advice. You've given up, said the reflection, staring up at the Black Knight from the murky water. You're You're going going soft. soft. If you don't don't show show these people people who's who's boss, boss, very very soon soon, they'll be telling telling you you what to do. A shadow squirmed between the rocks at the bottom of the river. A row of silver teeth flashed as the shadow changed direction and headed towards the surface. If you want people people to go go down down on their their knees knees to you, you, continued the reflection, you must must force force them, them, beat them, them, burn them, them, fry them alive in boiling oil. The pike that had once been a baby, but was now half grown, burst out of the water and with one snap of its vicious jaws, gobbled up the Black Knight's reflection, armor and all. The Black Knight went back to King Basil's castle full of evil ideas. His reflection was right. He had to assert himself. So from that day on, he ruled with a fist of iron. Anyone who dared to question him had had his head chopped off. He had every piece of gold in the country brought to his castle and locked away in a strong room to which only he had the key. He killed all the animals and burnt all the corpses so that nobody had anything to eat. He declared that every single person in the country was his slave and he made them worship him. He became like the devil. And Ruritania was hell. A year passed, and the Black Knight was the most feared ruler in the whole world. Strangely though, the more powerful he became, the more frightened he became too, in case somebody should rob him of his power. He needed someone to help him. He needed a friend to tell him what to do. But of course, he did not have any friends. Then, he remembered his reflection. He slipped out of the castle one morning, and ran down to the banks of the river altar. If anyone could advise him, his reflection could. He edged towards the muddy brown water and leaned out, expecting to see his own face staring back at him. But there was nothing there. His reflection had disappeared. Then, something stirred in the depths. At first, the Black Knight could not work out what was disturbing the water, but slowly he started to recognize his own features laying just below the surface. His reflection had returned. At least, he thought he had. He peered closer. It was his face all right, and yet it looked different. The face in the water was grotesque. It was twisted. It was evil. Just then, the Black Knight saw a fin break the water, and he suddenly realized what he was staring at. The pike. The pike that was now fully grown. The pike that had swallowed his reflection. The pike that now had his face. With one powerful thrust of his mighty tail, the great fish leaped from the water, its jaws gaping, its teeth flashing. It devoured the Black Knight in one bite. Rovatania returned to normal form from that day onwards. With the Black Knight dead, the Prime Minister was released from prison, and he set about appointing a new king, or queen, straight away. There were some people who wanted the Pike to be king, because he had eaten the Black Knight, but fishes tend to make useless monarchs. Their crowns are forever slipping off for one, and they put out a rather unattractive smell for another, so it was never crowned. Instead, a young lady called Gertrude was chosen to be queen. 
She ruled wisely and sensibly for many years, and gave the pike a special place in the royal goldfish pond, where it lived happily for the rest of its long life. <laughs>